For me, 10 days first started, I was sitting in my office saying to God, I feel alone in ministry. I was like, there's people that are like in the ministry that like I'm ministering to, but like I feel alone in ministry. I'm like, what do I do, God? And God's like, do your job. I'm like, oh yeah. And so I like work on some emails and stuff, kind of forget about it. And then I get a knock on my window and it's this girl who was a part of a prayer group that had started in my workplace. And she's just like, come here. I'm like, oh God, this is you, awesome. And so like I run out and she's just like, come with me. And we go down to this random office in the legislative office building. There's just a group of pastors from all over the state that are just praying. Apparently they did that like every month or so. And I had no idea and like found all these pastors from all around the state who were just like praying together. And I was like, oh God, this is so good. One of them was Greg Healy, um, who connected me with Jonathan Frizz and yeah, the rest is, uh, is history. Started uh, organizing 10 days in New Haven um, and then transitioned into the, the online global family version of expression or expansion of 10 days. As someone who works in a physically demanding job, what does fasting look like for you? I ask God, you know, I'm like, hey, what could, should I do this year? Like, what am I, like, what is like reasonable and like realistic? So this year, it looks like juice, eggs on days that I have to work, you know? Um, it, it's about like what that consecration like is for, right? Um, there's a guy, Jordan Sang, who like has done a lot of like miracle work. Um, he talks about the, the power equation, right? And it's like, it's gifting, authority, faith, consecration, and one other thing that I can't remember. But consecration is this big part of like, if you need to like see big power, right? Like introduce some consecration. Like it can, it can help compensate for areas you might be struggling in your faith or you might be lacking in gifting or even authority, right? And so the consecration itself is this like, it's just like a deep expression of like a desire to see God's power manifest. During the 10 days of prayer, how have you seen that power manifest? Oh man. Um, so, well, first was in support, right? So the first year it was in my apartment, like 10 days was in my apartment every night throughout 10 days. Um, and I, I think the most we ever had was eight people. And that was because um, one of the nights was at a friend's house. And there were kids in the neighborhood that like came onto the front porch where we were. <laughs> there were like half a dozen kids on the porch. Um, and it was just like low numbers, but we were all, you know, we're, we're praying in. Um, some nights it was one person, some nights it was two, most nights it was one or two. Um, but then the next year, um, two people came up alongside me. Um, and I just like did not have the strength to do it, like to organize it, any of that. And, um, it went from 10 nights at collectively three different people's houses to 10 nights at 10 different churches all around the greater New Haven area. Um, so there was just like that, right? <laughs> and then um, that year, that second year, um, I got to like show up, ask God what he wants to do and just be a part of it. Um, I remember one night there was, I was, I'm on my way. I'm kind of getting like, like anxious or frustrated or whatever. And I'm just like, you know what? No, God, like, that's not what you want. What do you want to do tonight? And I'm like driving to this church. I have no idea who it is. Um, like even whose church it was. I didn't like know the pastor. And I felt the Lord was like healing and miracles. I was like all excited, but I was also just like, wait, what's the difference? Like, wait a minute. Like, what's the difference here? Um, and so we're, we're there at 10 days and um, like had words about a knee, an ankle, and somebody that was um, anemic. They just couldn't get warm. Their hands and their feet were like always cold and they didn't know why. Um, and I get to the church and the pastor's blind. Like he's mostly blind in one eye, completely blind in another. Um, turns out he'd like 
lost ministry opportunities in like work settings because of it. Um, and like it was progressively declining his vision. And um, I remember Pastor Lenny was there and like he couldn't see that him from like, he couldn't point him out from, I don't know, 15 feet away. Um, and so we like put out the words for an ankle, a knee, cold hands and feet. Um, sure enough, they all come up. The knee gets healed. The ankle gets healed. Warmth is restored to this woman's hands and feet. And I'm just like, and miracles. And I just like turn to the pastor and I'm just like, can we pray for your eyes? And he's just like, yeah. And so, you know, we lay hands on his eyes. We're all praying for him. And um, I'm like, all right, open your eyes. Like, is it any better? And he's like, I'm like, let's keep praying. Let's keep praying. So like we keep praying. He opens his eyes and he's just like, I can see that young man across the room. He's wearing a black shirt. Like, Pastor Lenny, you're wearing Adidas. I can see those white stripes. And what was amazing, right, is one of his eyes was still blind, right? The, the one that had been progressively getting worse, vision was restored in like an immense degree. Um, and I even checked in a year later and he's like, it's progressively getting more and more. Like it's like continue, like my eyesight is just returning to me slowly. Um, and you just think of like healing is something that can be um, instant or take a long time, right? Um, but the miracle of like the walk and the growth and the spiritual sight that's growing in this man as his eyesight is restored um, is not what I was expecting. Like driving in my like Honda Accord on the way to this like to this event. Um, so yeah, those are those are some of the ways I've seen power displayed. God filled. Thank you.